I found this little lady that had some really good bones, but a terrible paint job. So I'm gonna team up with the Real Milk Paint Company to give her the best furniture makeover you've ever seen. And it starts right now. Today's video is sponsored by The Real Milk Paint Company. I'm gonna be using their fabulous products in my makeover today. So here she is. I spotted this little lady with a bad paint job at the ReStore a couple of weeks ago. I just fell in love with this detailing on this drawers. I didn't know what I was gonna find underneath here. I did figure out this was built in um, Indiana. It's not a super expensive furniture company, but it's an old small company, really cute, dovetail drawers. The paint job on this thing was really, really bad. So Somebody just slapped some latex paint on here. I did pick this up for $45, but with all the work that I've had to do on this, honestly, somebody should have paid me to take it. Since this is a really old dresser, I did do a lead test on it. I was pretty sure that this was latex paint, but I just wanted to check to be sure it's always a good idea when you're working with really old furniture and it passed the test. So I am ready to start stripping this dresser. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I have been working on this dresser for quite a while. Um, stripping paint off of furniture is very difficult. I get a lot of comments of people saying, how dare you paint that? You ruined it. And always my response is, if somebody wants to strip the paint down the line, they can just restore it to its natural wood beauty. This is such an easy statement to make, but it actually takes a really long time to strip furniture back. I'm starting off with this Blue Bear Soy Gel. They sell this on the Real Milk Paint Company website and it's my favorite stripper. It's pretty much the only one that I work with. Um, and if you've never worked with paint stripper before, you just want to put it on really thick. I use a chip brush to spread it out because I usually end up pitching those afterwards. So you don't want to use a nice brush to put this on. You just want a nice thick layer of this and then you just let it set and go to work. I'm removing the back decorative piece just to make the stripping process easier. Um, I normally don't put these back on, but I think I'm going to keep this one in the end. I don't know about you, but it never gets old watching this stuff bubble up. So I did a time lapse for you. There's something just so satisfying about watching it bubble and crinkle up right in front of your eyes. Stripping the top was pretty satisfying. This came off really easily, but it's just one of those instances where the varnish underneath the paint just gets really super gooey. Like every paint, every varnish is gonna strip differently. And while this came off really nicely, it was so gooey and sticky. And that made me run into a lot of problems later. When it came to stripping the details, I pulled out a heat gun and tried to see if that was going to work a little bit better. I also sanded some of the drawers just because I got sick of using the stripper. Um, when it comes down to it, no matter what method you use, it's going to take a long time and you just have to have a lot of patience in the process. I also busted out my carbide scraper and that was actually really great for the sides because the sides were made of a different type of wood than the drawers and the top. When it came to the detailing on the feet, I did lots of different coats of stripper on here and I used some steel wool to get into those details. When you need to clean this stripper off, it works really well to just grab some simple green and clean off any residue you have. I had to use several applications of stripper on these little detailed areas on the feet as well as the drawers and I used a little brass brush to get into some of these details and even a toothpick to pick out some of that paint. Once I got the majority of the paint off, it was time to sand. I grabbed my Festool Rotex sander and used a medium grit 120 sandpaper to smooth out all the surfaces. After I did that, I grabbed a 220 to smooth it out even further. The wood on the drawers and the top are really pretty. It's like like a tiger oak, so I'm planning on keeping those natural. One thing I really love about the sander is it has a detail attachment that you can switch out on the head and that helped me get in these details really well.
I used a brown tinted wood filler to make some repairs on this decorative feature on the frame as well as some of the drawers. And I know this is really extra, but I used my Festool sander to get all the details in these legs. You can buy these foam abrasives for any sander that you have, but I have a lot that fit my surf prep sander, so that's what I use to get all the details on these feet, as well as all the other curved surfaces on here. Once my wood filler was dry, I sanded all of that down, and I even used a painter's tool on here to carve out the shape of this little decorative piece. So after about a week of prep, I am finally ready to start making this lit piece look pretty. I'm using a tack cloth and wiping back any of that dust. And as you can see here, the sides don't have that pretty tiger oak like the front drawers and the top. So I am gonna paint the frame. I know you're like, Christina, you just stripped all that paint off, but this is gonna look gorgeous, trust me. So I'm grabbing my real milk paint and this is in the color earth green and I'm just gonna mix it up. Each of these comes with a bag of paint, a marble, and you just measure it one to one ratio with water. So I'm doing about, I think three fourths cup of powder here and then three fourths cup of water. Really simple, just pour it into the container that it comes in and then I'm gonna seal that up and give it a shake for five minutes and then you let it set for 20 minutes to get all those pigments to disperse into that water. So while my paint is resting for 20 minutes, I'm gonna tape off the feet because I'm gonna be leaving these natural and I'm also going to tape off the top. I really love the beautiful oak on the top of here, but the base, not so much. That definitely is gonna be uneven and splotchy. You see this a lot on furniture where they use the really nice veneer on the top and on the front, but then the wood that's on the sides is not as nice and the wood here on the frame is not as nice. Nice. those would have been toned to match the entire piece when it was stained so I'm gonna paint all those areas that originally would have been toned now that my paint has set for 20 minutes it should be ready so I'm just gonna open it up and stir it and see what it looks like if your paint is too thin you can add a little bit more powder to it if it's really thick and clumpy you can add a little bit more water but mine is perfect and ready to go I'm gonna be using a synthetic brush today to apply my milk paint, but you can use a natural bristle brush, you can use one of those foam brushes, and you can also use a roller, it's just up to you. If you've never seen me work with milk paint before, it is a lot different from some of the paints you have seen on my channel. It is completely non-toxic and it's actually made of organic ingredients. This paint in particular is 100% organic. Um, it's actually even food contact safe and VOC free, so it has no odor to it at all. It's even biodegradable and compostable. So if you are an earth lover, this paint is definitely for you. It really shines over raw wood like this. It just soaks in and you can still kind of see the grain and it just becomes one with the furniture. That's why I really love stripping back when I'm gonna be using milk paint down to that bare wood but you can use it over a previously finished surface you just want to prep it by scuffing it and you can even add um, their ultra bonder which is going to help it stick but since I have stripped all of this back to raw wood this milk paint is going to be the perfect option for it it's going to be nice and smooth and just really absorb into that bare wood and look gorgeous if you want to watch some of my other milk paint masterpieces, I will create a playlist for you guys and link it in the description box. I decided to paint the top two drawers as well. The wood on here was pretty, but it's not as pretty as those three decorative drawers and the wood that's on top of the furniture. And I thought having those two top drawers painted would give it a little bit more contrast when you're looking at it head on. 
The Real Milk Paint comes in 56 unique colors, and of course you can mix those to create custom shades as well. Once you mix this powder form up with water, this paint is good for about two weeks. You just wanna make sure that you keep it in the refrigerator during that time. This is one coat of dried coverage. You see that the shade dries a little bit darker and I'm loving the way that it looks when it dries. So I decided to do a second coat on here. I waited about two hours between coats. While that second coat is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and treat my drawers and the top with this soft wax in the color dark brown. I'm gonna be using this to seal the drawers in and also bring out the beauty of this natural wood. And the brown is just going to give it a little bit of a deeper finish as opposed to using a soft wax. I love using this feature on natural wood. I think it just really brings out the beauty in it and adds just a little bit of color for a little extra I'm using a natural bristle wax brush to put, th that is hard to say you guys, a natural bristle wax brush to put this on, but you could use a, any lint-free rag or cloth to put this on as well. Real Milk Paint Company's wax, uh, soft wax, is made with mostly beeswax and it has just a bit of carnauba wax in it. So it doesn't have the harsh solvent smell of other waxes that I've worked with. And it gives a beautiful matte sheen, it dries hard, and it has a pretty long open working time, which I love. This also comes in gray, white, and ebony, which would be really cool to shade over the milk paint. And these all work over the milk paint and I'm gonna use the clear version to seal my paint, which you'll see in a second. But look at this side by side. Oh my gosh, it looks so gorgeous. I let this sit and soak into the wood for about 10 or 15 minutes and then I just come back with a lint-free cloth and wipe away the excess. Now that my paint is dry, I'm gonna use the same soft wax that I just used on those drawers, but this is the clear version. So this is going to seal the paint. I really love sealing milk paint with a soft wax like this or with hemp oil because it's so absorbent and this just really soaks into the paint and makes your piece look seamless. This clear wax does not dry white. So if you get it into any of those cracks and crevices, you will not see a white cast in there. It does take a little bit of elbow grease, guys. I'm not gonna lie, you gotta work it in there. I'm using a different brush than I used with the brown. Um, I always like to separate wax brushes, colored wax brushes from clear, just so that they're nice and clean and you're not gonna contaminate your waxes or contaminate your paint with different colors that you don't wanna do. Um, so you just rub this wax in really easy. Again, this has a long open time so that you can work it into the entire piece and it's gonna deepen the color a little bit, but this does dry down um, so it's not going to be this dark when it dries down. Once you get all your wax worked in and it's set for a little bit, you wanna take a lint-free cloth and just buff back any of that excess. You don't wanna have excess sitting on there. So if there's any part of the wax that has not absorbed, just lightly buff that off.
now that I've got the whole frame complete, I ripped off uh, that tape that I had taped off here and I'm gonna do the top. But as I was doing the top, I realized, oh wait, now I need to protect the paint because I don't wanna get any of that dark wax on the paint. So I just taped off the frame and then did that same process that I did on the drawers with this beautiful wood on the top with the dark wax. And of course, I don't want to forget about the feet. I'm leaving these natural as well. So those are getting hit up with that dark wax too. I'm using the original hardware for this piece. I just needed to clean them up. So I did a vinegar water boil on them for 10 minutes. After they cooled off, I grabbed some very fine steel wool and then you can just buff these up to their original brass beauty. I'm always shocked at the difference every time I do this. Just look at this side by side. I also refinished this back plate so whoever ends up with this can decide if they want to keep it or not. I personally like to take them off, but it looked pretty. I refinished it, did the work, so I'm going to stage it with this back on. Last step, getting that last piece of hardware on, just to remind you, here is what I started off with and here it is now. This furniture makeover was a ton of work, but I think it was really worth it. I love seeing this beautiful wood shine and be brought back to its glory with that dark, soft wax. And I really love the new paint job. You guys might be mad that I painted portions of it, but I love the way that milk paint just absorbs into that wood and just looks so cohesive and beautiful. I hope you guys enjoyed this makeover as well. Let me know down in the comments what you think and I will be back with another video soon.